There's a new feature rolling out to your Apple TV with iOS 14.5, and it was actually one that was announced at Apple's Spring Loaded event, a new color calibration feature. In short, it uses the front of your iPhone's sensors, and you'll hold your phone up to your TV. The Apple TV will flash red, green, blue, and then a number of gradient shades, and voila, it'll take that data and formulate a new color profile to more accurately display films and TV shows as they were intended to be viewed on your TV, allegedly. In theory, this sounds like a really cool idea. But is it too good to be true? Well, we are going to be putting that to the test by pitting this new feature against two other common calibration methods, a consumer calibration Blu-ray disc from Disney that depends on your human eyes for accuracy, and a Hollywood standard, very expensive piece of software called CalMan that uses very expensive pieces of hardware called colorimeters to ensure absolute accuracy. But I guess we first have to answer the question, and it's one that on the surface might seem a little bit silly, but it's actually really complex. What is color anyways? How and why humans interpret color has always been explained differently by scientists, ontologists, and philosophers for thousands of years. But for these purposes for my video, I will oversimplify in this manner. Color is how special cells located inside of our retinas perceive the visible spectrum, which is basically what we call the wavelength and intensity of specific electromagnetic radiation that human eyes can see. Us humans, well, we have three types of specialized retinal cells for conveying color information, and they're known as receptors, which in essence, convey all of the colors that our human eyes are capable of seeing. This, the, the, the fullness of color perception, is known as the spectral locus and it's accurately mapped in 3D space because it takes into account luminance or, or brightness as well, with the bottom of the spectrum being pure black and the top of the spectrum being pure white. But working with color in 3D, well, it's just, it's not very convenient. So a more popular method, and one that you actually may be familiar with, is the chromaticity diagram. It basically just takes the locus and flattens it. This chart is a representation of every color that the human eye can see. All of the colors along the border of this shape, well, they are completely unique. They're different from each other. However, any point inside the border is the result of taking two colors along the chart's perimeter and mixing them together. Even crazier, as long as the perimeter points have a straight line drawn in between them, they'll make the same intersect color no matter where they are on the chart's exterior, so long as they pass through an equal energy white, which is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. Remember earlier how I said that our eyes contain three specialized types of photoreceptors? Well, one of those three receptors is most sensitive to red, the other to green, and the last to blue. RGB, which may ring a bell because if you zoom up really close to just about any display, you'll see that each pixel is made up of three subpixels, one red, one green, and one blue. This is called a gamut, and using these three colors allows displays to cover the largest possible area of the chromaticity diagram. Now, there are technically colors that our eyes can see that can't be produced by a pure R, G, and B light mixture, but they're very rare. These three pixels can mix together just about any color as long as your eyes are far enough away from the subpixels for the light to blend. You see, here's the problem. It's basically impossible, at least currently, for our technology to produce screens that generate spectrally perfect reference coordinates of red, green, and blue. So the gamut of your TV screen, or the screen that you're watching this video on, is actually much smaller than a triangle matching our human vision. And displays are not even made equal amongst themselves. Manufacturing variants, luminance differences, etc. They make every display different. So to ensure that there is at least some uniformity from one screen to another, standard color spaces have been established that tell displays how colors are supposed to be interpreted from a file or video source, and it builds them around a specific white point. For example, this video and most other content you find online and on TV is in the Rec. 709 color space. As you can see, there are a lot of colors the human eye can see that this color space just doesn't account for. The newer Rec. 2020 standard, and that's the one that's often used in HDR formats, has a much broader color space. 
Still not on par with our two peepers, but closer. One last thing. You may be wondering, uh, this chart doesn't have every color I can think of. Like, where, where's dark green? Aha! This diagram ignores luminosity, which we more commonly refer to, and somewhat incorrectly, but I'm not going to get into that, as brightness. Remember that 3D locus? Well, color spaces, like Rec. 709, the video you're watching right now, also have a z-axis. And that's for saturation, which creates a kind of a wedge shape. Think of pure black as 0% and pure white as 100%. Deep blue, it's a very dark color and doesn't have much white added. However, yellow, which is a mixture of red and green, most certainly does. And now we get to the main point of the video. Calibration. I mentioned earlier that there is display variance from one screen to another, and that's true. So what you want is for your TV to be as close to the color space as the content you're watching as possible, if you hope to see it as it's intended to be viewed. How well calibrated your display comes from the factory? Well, it can be a bit of a wash. Let me show you an example. My computer monitor, it is not cheap at $1,600 new. And it actually came with a piece of paper that I've since lost that shows the results of a hand calibration performed by LG in their factory for this specific screen when it was made. I took this device called a colorimeter and measured my display as it came from the factory. The color space used by macOS for this monitor is DCI-P3. In this wedge, we have the DCI-P3 standard. And in this wedge, we have the measurements from the monitor as it came calibrated from the factory. Now, if we overlay them, you can see that my screen exceeds the DCI-P3 spec in the reds. However, it falls a little bit short in the blues and big time short in the greens and yellows. Ideally, these shapes would perfectly overlay themselves. So I performed my own calibration with a colorimeter and open source screen calibration software called DisplayCal for PCs. And the results, well, they're good. It massively improved my blues. And well, it, it didn't do much to my greens because my display, well, it's not 100% P3 accurate, only 98% which is a little bit of a bummer, but not uncommon. My point here is that my monitor was hand calibrated at a factory and even it was off. And hand calibration for monitors is way more common than for TVs. Most cheaper TVs and even mid-range TVs, they don't have display calibration in factory. The panels are made with inspect, they're assembled, boxed, and shipped. And even the displays that are calibrated, like my monitor, well, they can change over time, which requires recalibration. And so now we finally get to your TV. Well, some TVs, they're going to be better calibrated than others, but most can benefit from additional and occasional calibration. If we take my colorimeter, we'll find that on my LG G1077 OLED TV, my cinema and filmmaker modes are actually very, very accurate. Not perfect, but close. They're so accurate, in fact, that the Apple TV notifies me that calibration just straight up isn't required on these modes. But my TV, it's unusually high-end and has been manually calibrated before. So to simulate a more real-world test, I'm going to use my TV's standard picture profile, which adds in a lot of blue to the image, like most standard modes on most television sets. And then I will try and calibrate the TV using these common methods. At the end, I will measure my results with a colorimeter and see which method got us closest to the accurate color space, and if the Apple TV's color calibration mode is worth using at all. The first method we're going to use is the most tried and true, the old school way of doing things, with a calibration disc. This is from Disney. It's actually called World of Wonder. Uh, it's not available anymore. I bought this more than a decade ago. But there are a bunch of modern versions that you can buy. Many are free. The idea is you put a bunch of charts on your TV and then using your eyes, sometimes little tools like this blue filter, and then your TV remote, you adjust the settings of your TV. And it's pretty exhaustive. Brightness, contrast, hue, tint, saturation, luminance. There's a bunch of settings that you can modify. So I'm going to do this to the best of my ability, and hopefully I can compete with the more modern automated way of doing things. And now we get to the star of the show, the new color balance feature for the Apple TV. So you're gonna need an Apple TV, an iOS device running iOS 14.5 or later that has Face ID, and then this soulless awful remote from hell. Using this whole this awful remote from hell under settings and video and audio. Video and audio. And then you'll see Dolby Vision at the top. Maybe. If you do, 
you're done. You don't need to do anything. And that's because Dolby Vision for certification requires that the panel ship with inspect from the factory. Apple assumes that that's good enough and they won't even let you try the color balance feature. If you have Dolby Vision, that's the right setting. Leave it there. But if you don't, if you have an HDR display or an SDR display, you can scroll down to color balance and then a little pop-up card will show up on your iPhone. You can press continue. And then this little blue swatch will show up in the center of the screen. And all you have to do is hold your Face ID device up to the color swatch. You don't have to touch the screen, you just have to be within an inch. And then it will run through this red, blue, green, oh, red, green, blue, and then a number of gray swatches. And once that completes, we're notified that the color balance is complete and we can view our results. And in our case, they're pretty stark. It goes from this very blue washed out sand to a much more natural looking overall picture. Great. The question is, how does it stand up to actually pro calibrating your display? Let's find out. And now we get to the big boy, professional calibration. I'm using a piece of software called Calman. Now I'm using the home consumer version specifically for this model of TV, which is only $150, but if you pay for the professional version, it's over $2,000. Then you need a high quality colorimeter. These are anywhere from a few hundred dollars to again, a couple thousand dollars. And then if you wanna be really fancy, you need to buy a pattern generator. Those cost about $2,000. I'm not using one of those because my TV actually can generate patterns built in. And it's specifically designed to work with the software, which is kind of cool. But it, basically what it's gonna do is do a pre-calibration it flashes a bunch of swatches on screen. And then once it's done that, it's going to correct for the grayscale point on the television with its maximum and minimum luminance. And then it's going to actually do the color calibration. So it's taking to, into account a bunch of different factors. And it uploads these results directly to the TV. I don't have to make any settings changes because it's all done over the network, which is very cool. So let's start by pressing this button and it's gonna start flashing swatches. And then in about, and I'm not kidding you, two hours, we'll have a fully calibrated display. The results are actually surprising with some caveats. Now these charts, they may look overwhelming, but I'm gonna break them down for you because they're really not. Let's start off on the left with RGB balance or white balance. This measures how accurately your TV can display various levels of gray from pure black to pure white. Now, ideally, they should all have the same color balance, but lots of TVs have the tendency to, say, have warmer highlights. This is, well, this is an exaggeration, but a bunch of pink here could cause the brighter parts of an image to have an unbalanced red tone relative to the rest of the scene. In all of the base calibrations, our TV was consistently poor, but we expected this because the standard color profile had an extremely heavy blue bias. Now, with that said, a poor white balance calibration isn't going to massively impact your viewing experience. So even with my crappy hand calibration fail, the display, though noticeably worse than the other <laughs> profiles, wasn't horrible at all. And without A-B testing, I probably wouldn't have noticed. Color, however, is where differences can be identified with much more ease. Inside these boxes are the reference colors or hues that should be displayed by the TV. And these dots represent what hue was actually displayed by the TV as measured by the colorimeter. Now, ideally, you'd have a perfect measurement with the dot being inside the box. But as you can see in our baseline results, reds and greens are kind of all over the place. They're much cooler than they should be. And our blues are very exaggerated, something that we already knew from the prior test. Now, on the left, you see a delta E value. The delta E value is a numeric representation of how different the measured hue, the dot, is from the target hue, the box. The larger the number, the greater the error or distance from the ideal color. Now, one important side note, the delta E value has a reporting issue in that it doesn't actually report color accuracy, it just reports how far away you are from the target measurement. So, for example, a dot here and a dot here, they're both equidistant from the box and thus have the same delta E value. However, I would likely much prefer this value because it has a deeper blue bias rather than getting purple like the other point. Okay. 
With that out of the way, the Disney World of Wonder calibration, well, I failed, guys. It was the loser, with the average delta value of 8.4. Now, in second place, the Apple TV does a really great job bringing the average delta E value to just 2.5, with a maximum error of just 6.4. And yes, that leaves us with the winner, professional calibration. Are you really surprised? With an average and incredible delta E value of just 1.9 with a maximum error of 3.5. But let's digest what these results actually mean, okay? Number one, yes, the Apple TV color calibration makes a difference. And yes, in my instance, it did prove a measurably better color output on my television. Number two, the results in my example, they were certainly noticeable by eye, and personally, I found that the calibrated colors were significantly more pleasing. However, I also color calibrated the crappiest default color profile on my TV. If you typically watch your TV in cinema, filmmaker, movie mode, etc., which you should, you'll likely find yourself where I did, with the Apple TV simply displaying a notification that your display looks good enough and that no calibration is required. However, with my professional calibration instrument, even the profile that the Apple TV said was perfect was able to be calibrated further. However, at that point, the visual differences were so slim that really only in certain scenes could I actually discern a difference. So I can't really fault the Apple TV for that. Number three, what I can fault the Apple TV for, however, is its method of calibration, which while cool, I believe to be less than ideal. You see, all the Apple TV does is change the colors that the box itself outputs over HDMI to your TV. It doesn't fix your TV. And this results obviously in potential issues beyond the Apple TV being the only color calibrated HDMI device in your entertainment console. Let's go back to my Apple TV results. The value with the greatest error is white. And that's not good because if you look on the chromaticity chart, it is still way too blue. Whereas on the professional calibration, it's basically perfect. You need a good white point. And the reason it's not on the Apple TV is because, well, the hue settings on the TV are just really jacked up. They're really freaking blue. <laughs> and you can only do so much with the input signal coming from the Apple TV. So that gets us to number four, my final point, And it's this, calibrating your actual display that is going to give you much better results. And look, I don't wanna make this entire video seem like a waste of time, but color, color is important and standards exist for a reason, but our eyes, they are really good at kind of resetting our internal white balance. And even on the crappiest color profile that my TV offers, after the initial recoil of me going, Ew, that looks awful, 30 minutes after watching a show or playing a game and it just looks normal. There are a bevy of other settings that have a far greater visual difference and impact on your overall viewing experience, like excessive brightness, which washes out colors, horrid motion smoothing that makes movies look jittery and unsettling, dynamic contrast enhancement, which often does the opposite of enhancing and crushes your shadows and your highlights, introducing yucky banding issues as well with color and edge enhancement or excessive sharpness, which results in edge artifacting like a mid 2000s video game, etc. The list of half-baked features that television manufacturers put in your TV that ruins the image quality are far more numerous and culpable than any color profile on your TV is likely to be. So here is my advice to you. Stick to the movie, cinema, or filmmaker profiles that your TV ship with, and then Maybe consider visiting websites like Ratings and 4K.com to get suggested picture settings based on their color calibrations that they've done for your specific TV model and see where you end up. If you then run an Apple TV calibration and find yourself liking the changes, great. But you're likely to find that the Apple TV just says, hey, you don't need to calibrate your television. And that's ultimately what you want anyway. So it's cool, but Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, send this video to someone you don't like. They're gonna hate it. Please leave a comment down below if you've tried this feature and if you noticed a difference. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.